Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the goodness of you. We thank you that you are so good. We thank you that I had that opportunity to come together and just to be in your presence tonight. We thank you that your Holy Spirit's going to move mightily in each and every one of us, everybody that's watching, Father, and the people in the future that are going to be watching, Father. They will be touched because your Holy Spirit moves mightily. So I thank you for using me tonight, Heavenly Father, and allow each and every word that comes out of my mouth to glorify you and to touch people. Let them hear that whatever comes out of my mouth from you to hear it in their own language, that they can understand it, that they will know exactly what you have for them, Father. It's all about love. It's all about grace and mercy, and you have it for all of us. So we love you and praise you, and all God's people said, amen. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday. Beautiful spring weather. Amen. Yes. Amen. I've seen a pile of robins the last couple of days. Yeah. A pile of them. It's like, where did they go? And all of a sudden, it's like, wow, look at that. You know, they must have all been waiting in the tree for me to see them. Amen. God is so good. Um, I'm up here, of course. Pastor's on R&R, &R, and she's definitely getting some rest, and she's enjoying some sunshine. She's been through much and I know everybody's been lifting her up in prayer and we appreciate that so much without a doubt because that keeps us all strong just like we talked earlier David shared earlier you know about prayer prayer is so awesome so we're just uh, grateful that we can be here tonight and just give God the glory for everything that's going to take place amen? amen God just laid it upon my heart a couple things but this one I believe is for tonight we're going to talk about salt Okay, that's good. Should we call her good? Okay, now I was scribbling all kinds of stuff down. It was good because this morning I just got to relax and took care of the dogs, of course. They require things first, okay? Then I get to dig in the word, amen? Yeah, it, well, they are to a point. First they were on mine because I slept in a little bit, okay? And then I had to get them going, like, okay. But anyway, a couple things that... I want to share with the salt. Uh, I've shared part of it before, but salt can be a bond breaker. And the reason I say that, and I shared it before because I used to work at a road commission, so I understand the purpose of salt, especially in the wintertime. Michigan, we, we see a lot of that usage, you know. You know, you can have ice, and I was going to bring an example here, but I don't think we, our microphones would quite pick it up, but if you put salt in ice, just put it in there. You can hear it snap, crackling, and popping, and working. And what salt does is it, it starts melting through ice or snow, hard pack snow, and it melts through it till it gets to a surface that it can't melt through anymore, and then it starts doing this. So what it's doing is it's forming a layer and breaking that bond, that ice or snow in this case. But because what the Word says about us, we're salt and light, we can break the bond, the bonds that the enemy has placed right. upon people That's right. because we have the authority of Jesus yeah. Christ in us. Amen? Yeah. So we can do that. And that's what God put upon my heart to share that tonight because there's so many people out there hurting and we have healing rooms this weekend. So if you're hearing me and you need healing, you need prayer, come and join us Saturday from 11 to 1. We'll be here and we'll just be led by the Holy Spirit to pray for you in however way you want to be prayed for, and God's going to work miracles. Amen? Amen. Amen. So with that, we are salt, and we have that seasoning in us, in a sense, yeah. too, is another way to put it. Not only to break, help break the bonds because of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, and we can come against that garbage of the world, you know, stuff that the enemy has placed upon people's lives, and break it once and for all. And that's a good thing. So we can take what we have and share it with other people and just allow that. Now, I'm going to jump back a little bit to uh, Genesis, of course. There's a couple passages regarding salt, but this is where, of course, Lot's wife turned to, turned to a pillar of salt. We're not going to go there. But I just wanted to bring that out because what happened is she looked back. Sometimes if we look back at our old stuff, we can be drugged back into it. So we've got to be cautious that we don't do that. That was a fine example that it's like, okay, you know, she was told not to do so. And there again, if the Lord is telling us, like we shared before, delayed obedience is disobedience. So don't disobey, don't delay. If God's telling you something, like I shared something with a friend of mine the other day, and um, I had been told this by the Holy Spirit a while ago, and that's why I was waiting for that 
a, the Holy Spirit timing in this case so I could address the situation, you know, and it was accepted. But if I had just jumped on the bandwagon right away, I might have missed it. Or I might have caused confusion or caused, a, you know, even disgruntled person because if I was in my own flesh and not the Holy Spirit. So we all understand that, but it's just a good reminder that when we wait on the Lord, it's the perfect timing. Amen to that. So don't look back at what has taken place in your life. Use it for the testimony that God's going to take you and deliver other people from junk. We all have testimonies to deliver other people. Amen to that. So let us pull these out. Amen. So we always want to move forward in God's way because we know that God, once we, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that should be our heart and our soul, that we want to do everything God's way. We're going to miss the mark? Of course we will. But yet again, keep pushing, keep striving, keep doing it, keep going up to that altar, writing that stuff down and getting rid of it. God, I can't do this. God, it's more than I can handle. Give it to Him because He can take care of it. I was just talking to somebody about the old stickers. God's my co-pilot. Uh, God, you can have the steering wheel. Because I know you can drive way better than I'll ever be able to drive. He has the experience and He has the power. Amen. And the strength to take us through all those situations that we put ourselves in sometimes. And sometimes they're just, it happens. It's life. You know, so we, we want to avoid that with all costs. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read part of that one. Talking about some more salt here. Okay. Uh, verse 13 through 16. In this, these passages is talking about we are salt and light to the world. Amen. And we can bring flavor to the world. We can bring life to the world. We can bring hope to the world. We can bring a lot of deliverance. We can bring a bunch of stuff. It's because of what's inside of us, because we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. So there's always... Being that we're the, we can be atmosphere changers. And like I say, we can bring flavor to people's lives by the Holy Spirit, by prophesying to them, by edifying them, encouraging them, loving them, helping them. There's so many ways that we can do that. that. That salt that's inside of us can season other people so that they can become the salt of the world also, the salt of God, wherever they go, you know. Because it's, we know there's a lot of untasteful things out there, you might say. So let's spruce it up with a little salt, then that's us. We are the salt. And our continents and the way we live life and stuff like that is showing people where we're at and what we're doing. We all have examples of that. People scratch your head sometimes. It's like, why? You know, how come God put you in my life? Or I'm glad God put me in your life. Something to that effect, you know, is always a good one. And there's reasons for that. Sometimes people go through tragedies and we have to come alongside of them. And we don't know the answers. But yet again, we know who knows the answers, but we know that that, per that person or whatever situation you're going through, God is with you all the time. You're never going to be alone, and He's going to love you through it, and He's going to give you the strength and endurance to get through it. Amen to that. Amen. We're never alone. Never alone. Amen. So let's start in chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown away, thrown out, and trampled underfoot by men. This is Jesus speaking here. I just want to share what he showed me in that area there. Yes, it can lose its seasoning. Yes, it can, like it's talking back to the road construction or road maintenance when you put salt on the road. It gets to a point where it gets diluted and it really doesn't work as well as it used to, but it's still there. You still have a residue. It's still, a, it's still there. You know, you might not see it. It might not be as strong. But what God showed me is by this 
being in fellowship, as we are the salt, as being in fellowship, as we're coming to church, as we're reading the Bible, as we're listening to worship and praise and stuff, that keeps us salty. That keeps us seasoned so that we can continue to give that out. Because that's what we're about. That's what God wants us to do. You know? So, if you are losing that seasoning part, it's because we're doing things in our own will, in our own way. You know, we want to take control. We want this to happen. And so, there again, we're, we're giving other things control of our life and not letting God control us. So then we lose that power. In a sense, it'd be a power. You know, that, that seasoning that we can give to other people and give them hope, nourishment in a good way. Amen? Yeah. So that's part of it. So yeah, if you feel like you're, you're losing it or you're getting diluted, dig into the Word. Amen? And things, uh, I finished up John here the other day and there was things in the back of the book of John I thought, I never read that before. Where did that come from? You know, and then I started in Acts too. It's like, okay. But as you get closer to the Lord, things jump off the page and He starts revealing them by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. All right, so verse uh, 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Some of that stuff is kind of a worldly way because you're going to light a lamp and then you're going to hide it. Why would you do that? But we see a lot of, I see a lot of things, I can't speak for everybody, in the world that don't make sense to me. And I guess this would be a fine example. You'd light a lamp and then you'd hurry up and cover it up, throw a blanket over the top of it or something. So what would you do that for? You know, what was too bright? Something to that effect. So we are the light. And there's no reason to cover up what we have. We need to be proud of what we have. We need to be proud of that light that Jesus Christ put inside of us so that we could give people hope. Because, man, there's spray paws, they're hurting. You can talk to people and they're just, there's tea, just like Shelly, she's not in here, just like she was saying about Hazel, you know, just watching a worship song, listening to it, you know, tears coming down your eyes. That's because the Holy Spirit's working. Amen. We are that light. We carry that Holy Spirit and we can do that for other people. It's not about us. It's not about our gain. If it is, there again, we're losing our saltiness if it's for our gain. And we don't want that. We want God to be glorified in all, all things that we do. Everything that we do, whether it's with our hands, our mouth, our prayers, whatever. I had the opportunity to walk into a store the other day and I'm a young man, but God with that perfect timing just was laying a bunch of stuff on me. And I was in there the other day and I said, hey, can I pray for you? I asked him how things were going. And well, I got to go see this doctor and this doctor. And I said, hey, can I pray for you? He's 27 years old. I said, can I pray for you? Absolutely. It's like, okay. But there again, it's perfect timing, you know, to do that. So wait on the Lord and be ready. Because boy, when, he, when he's ready, you just go for it, you know, because he's already preparing the hearts of people, whoever it may be, or even a group, who knows? You might be a captive audience, you never know. So always be ready. I like this last verse. Um, Let your light show, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Not that we have to say it, but yet again, there again, we want to glorify Him. And if they ask us, say, hey, it's not me that's doing this. Jesus Christ died on that cross so that I could do this. I could share this with other people. I could give other people hope because there's a lot of hopelessness in this world, but He is hope. We can have eternal life because of what Jesus did on that cross. Amen? Forever. That means forever. That don't mean just till for tomorrow. That means forever. We're only on this earth for a short time. Well, some days it seems like that, but a short time. <laughs> and that's okay. We have a purpose and a plan. God's got a purpose and a plan for us while we're here. Amen? And so we, get, we need to just grab a hold of that and enjoy it. Allow Him to work through us in all situations. Amen? Amen. So you never know. You'll be walking by somebody or whatever. and just I know I've been with Pastor. Be walking down her street and all of a sudden it's like, where is she going? Yeah. <laughs> She's over here someplace. It's like, okay, I know. I'll just kind of wander over there and join in and be in agreement with her as she is sharing something with this person, you know, prophesying or just say, hey, Lord wants me to pray for you. I'll, I'm, I'm on it. I'll be with you. I'll, you know, so never be afraid to let that 
Holy Spirit magnet take you wherever you want to, where He wants us to go. Amen. But the good part about that, like I say, may see your good works and glorify your Father, our Father in heaven. Like I say, this is still Jesus was speaking to us. And He's got some wonderful things because there's never enough. I don't want to say it. We can never outgive God. We can never outdo Him. He's using us as vessels so that we can help other people in whatever way we want. He wants us to do it. He knows what each and every one of our gifts are. and We can just edify Him through whatever that may be, whether it's speaking, our hands, our legs, coming alongside somebody, you got a flat tire, you come alongside of them. You just don't know, okay? Use the wisdom God gave you and let His light shine wherever we go. Amen? Get that salt shaker out and let's shake it. Let's, let's sprinkle wherever we go so that we're seasoning things for God. Amen? Amen. Not us. Let's read one more passage. And we're going to go into Mark um, chapter 9. We're going to do it real quick. Amen. Yeah, so if we lose that, that seasoning effect from our salt, you know, we become no value to, to anybody really. Even to ourselves, we can actually be self-destructive if we lose that. Once we become a Christian, if we lose that, you know, we're, we're on a slippery slope, you might say. Amen. Seeking one's own ways or ambitions, wants, you know, that's how you can lose that stuff. That's why we don't want to do that. We want God's ways. But if we follow God's ways, we can continue to... Uh, be fruitful. You know, we can have the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is in us. And that's one way to tell. We're all different levels. We know that for sure. But yet again, when you see the fruits of the spirit in other people, you know, the, there's just a whole list of them. You know where they're at. And you can, you know, it, it, it's kind of neat because you can catch up on them. When the Holy Spirit's pricking your brain, you, you can pick those little things up and then right away it's like, okay, we got a God conversation going here. You know, and that's how we edify each other. That's how we build each other up and keep each other on that, that path to where they can continue to be the salt and the light that Jesus wants us to be. So in Mark, uh, chapter 9, verse 49 and 50, let me touch base on here real quick. Jesus is speaking again. For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. I found that interesting. For everyone, when I, first, I read it about three times, and then that for everyone, that means everyone, and everyone watching, and everyone to watch, and everybody in this earth. will be seasoned with fire. Tests and trials. Amen? We have to go through them. Nobody, it's, it's not perfect on this earth. We know that. But the tests and the trials strengthen us and help us to allow God to be into our life and bring Him into these situations so that we can get through them. And then, of course, we can share those as testimonies for other people who are in positions where they need that. It is amazing how many people are going through things that we've been through. Once you get talking to someone, it's like, wow, been through there. Or, or they're going through something, gone through something that maybe you're going through. So that's a good thing. And then it talks about, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is a preservative. Amen to that. And, and where it's uh, talking about the seasoned with the fire, you know, that's purification. And now the salt is the, the, the preservative. So our sacrifices and stuff like that become preserved so that they can enhance God's kingdom. Amen? So that's a good way to look at that too because God is in all things. Amen? Amen. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. So continue to look for those ways that we can have that inside of us so that we do not lose it, so that we 
can continue to share it and it says you know to get along with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ we got to well, how is it die to the flesh and let the spirit live inside of us so that we don't have those issues so that we don't struggle with that and if we do struggle with anything like that the cross is the place to go give it to Jesus he knows where we are anyway he knows our hearts and if it's a heart issue of whatever sort he wants to clean it up he wants to straighten it out he wants our heart to be pure in everything that we did just like pastor always says when we have something in our heart that's not of him now we're going to filter our whole life basically through that every word that comes out of our mouth our actions the way we treat people our job everything is going to be reflected because we have a, a glitch or a dark spot in our heart that's going to cause us not to be honoring God with everything that we do. And our world loves to get us there, doesn't it? But yet again, it's more fun to back off and say, Okay, Lord, we can do this with you. I can do all things. Amen? So that's a good what I wanted to share with you there, too. A couple more things here. So by fellowshipping with others, by doing our church, gatherings at our church, reading the word, our worship, music can be very uplifting. And as we walk in the fruit of the spirit, those are that ways to keep our internal life and what God has in us so that we can share it with other people. Continue to live life to the best that we can. It is a wonderful life that we are in. It really is. You know, to have friends and to just have the opportunity to share and love on people. There's so many people out there that need a hug. Amen to that. So you can always do that for sure. Amen. And it's so much better to... Hmm, if we sacrifice now... not do things for ourselves but do them for other people for God especially we're, we're doing things sacrificing for God whatever it may be it is so much better than what could happen down the road eternity is a long time if you make bad decisions or if you do everything for yourself eternity is a long time in in that dark spot in hell in places that we don't God never meant for us to go there that's why Jesus died on that cross for us, so that we can be free of that. We can make those decisions, sacrifices, so that we can be free, so that we can enjoy the presence of the Lord. Uh, as we know, you know, Pastor Sister passed away not that long ago. You know, and many of us have lost loved ones, you know. And so there, most of us know our loved ones, where they're at. And it's a good, peaceful feeling when that day comes, when they do pass on from this world to eternity because God's word says it's awesome you know we won't know till we get there but I'm believing it you know it's going to be really good stuff so let's just keep uh, let our actions show how we are seasoned let's just continue to serve and love the Lord let's sprinkle that salt of life wherever we go so that God can be glorified. So that people can see Jesus in us. We might be the only Jesus they see, right? So let's be that.